So you've invested in a new hitting Rapsodo, but what are you supposed to do with it? It has many of the same data points we've covered on this channel that you may be familiar with from the pitching unit, but how should you apply this information on the other side of the ball? In today's video, we will be covering everything you need to know about getting started with the Rapsodo hitting unit. Welcome to Simple Saber Metrics, the brains behind baseball's latest data-driven revolution. If this is your first time here, and you want to learn more about the practical applications of baseball's latest technologies and training techniques, join the movement now by clicking the subscribe button down below. So we've talked about Rapsodo a lot on this channel, but in case this is the first piece of information you've turned to after opening up the box to your new hitting Rapsodo, I'll start with the basics. What is Rapsodo? Well, it is an optical tracking unit, and the hitting unit sits 14 feet in front of home plate that transmits a wireless signal to an easy-to-read dashboard on their iPad app. Like I said in the intro, there are many familiar data points across this dashboard if you started with the pitching unit. Things like velocity, spin rate, and spin axis, to name a few. But they all mean very different things on the hitting side. So what do these new data points mean? Where do I find them? And how should I apply them? Great questions. The Rapsodo Hitting Dashboard is an application on an iPad. The best way for me to help break down these new data points is to show you what you'll be seeing once you open it up for the first time. We will break it down section by section here. Starting with the menu along the left side. This offers many different selections that mostly are altered when you start it up and are left untouched throughout the duration of your sessions. Things like the settings, adjusting groups of players information, an option to record video with each swing, and other housekeeping items such as the Wi-Fi connection and battery level can be found here. Next we'll start looking into the fun stuff, the areas I've labeled the results tab. This info takes up the majority of the screen because it's the most important information to track. Starting in the top left, we have our exit velocity tab that gives you the output for the most recent hit as well as your maximum and average for the current session. Sliding to the right, you'll see the spin information tab. This hosts your total spin rate, spin axis, and an animation of these two things put together. We will dive deeper into what that means in a minute. Then on our far right, we have our launch angle tabs. The first tab shows your vertical launch angle, the one most of us are familiar with. And in the last tab on the right, you'll see your exit direction, which is what TrackMan labels horizontal launch angle, which shows you where each ball goes in the field directionally, left and right, from home plate. Finally, down below, we have a reconstruction of the path the ball has taken out in the field with different options for which angles you'd like to view it from, as well as helpful graphics for the distance and the position of the pitch when it crossed home plate. All of this information is awesome, especially when you're doing work in the cage, where you can really see how hard balls were hit and how far they would have traveled and to where in the field. The last section on the main screen is these descriptive tabs. This gives us more contextual information, such as the hit count, pitch count, pitch speed, and then another graphic that shows specifically where each ball crossed home plate without the ball flight information provided to the right. All right, so now that we've gone through what each of the sections are, let's go through an example to help provide you with some context about how to actually use this device in action. Starting with the first tab that we went over, the exit speed tab. This is always a pretty easy tab to read. The higher, the better. In this area, like I said before, you will see the most recent batted ball's exit velocity accompanied by your maximum and average exit velocities. It can be used to track improvements to exit velocity over time, spicing up cage sessions to stay above your average or top a new maximum, whatever matches the goals you have in the cage that day. It's one of the most straightforward sections on the screen. To give you a little more information, Rapsodo has provided the median exit velocity numbers they see throughout different levels of play in different drills to give you a baseline. As always, links to that information are in the description down below. This is a super helpful chart to refer to as you dive deeper into analyzing athletes for the first time using this device. Next, we will hop into a not so straightforward tab, the Spin Informations tab. After each pitch, you will see two numbers pop up here, those being the total spin and the spin axis. First, we're gonna tackle spin axis. This is the exact same measurement that we've talked about time and time again on this channel over on the pitching side, but it has a very different application. For our example, we have a spin axis of 10-11, 10, 
meaning the direction the ball is spinning from, not the axis it is spinning around, viewing the ball from the catcher's perspective, falls between the 10 and 11 mark on our clock. So what does that mean? Well, to break it down further for you, we can create four different sections on our diagram here. A ball hit with backspin will have a reading between 10 and 2 on the clock, with 12 being perfect backspin. Balls hit with spin axes between 2 and 4, and 8 and 10 will have more side spin, and of course that leaves between 4 and 8 to show pitches with top spin. This is important information to understand, as pitches hit with backspin travel the furthest. Pitches hit with side spin have the tail you've seen younger outfielders misread time and time again, and pitches hit with top spin bite downward sharply like a curveball, which limits the distance the balls will travel. So after hearing that, it's obvious that hitting balls with backspin is ideal. And this isn't a new idea, but is now one that we can quantify and work towards replicating more frequently with our hitters. To dive into the other half of this section, total spin rate, we will look at another graphic provided by Rapsodo to help explain what is good and what is not so good. Starting with a low spin rate, below 700 RPMs. This is a ball that was directly squared up, meaning it comes off the bat like a knuckleball. Normally pretty well struck, but they don't travel too far without the help of a little bit more spin. Pitches between 700 and 1500 have a little bit more spin, but it's still pretty squared up, which is a good thing, but it isn't maximizing the amount of spin to help it carry further either. Pitches that fall into that 1500 to 2500 range are ideal. This is the perfect range for baseballs to take flight at. Matching this with a good spin axis means maximizing distance for your hitters. Once you grow out of this range, you will begin to see a dip in exit velocity, and visually balls will begin to look mishit. This is the pop flies in the infield, foul balls, or choppers straight into the ground. As you'll notice, all of this information is an output based on previous performance. But as you continue to watch an athlete perform over time, you begin to see their trends, and by utilizing these ranges, you can see what they need to work for in order to improve. Now on to a little bit easier tab, our launch angle tabs, starting with our vertical launch angle. You'll see a graphical representation of each pitch's launch angle here. This one has a launch angle of 22 degrees, and the ideal range for this statistic based on historical MLB ranges would be between 12 and 28 degrees. I have a whole video on this that I'll link in the description down below if you want more information on launch angle. On our last stop on this top row, we see our exit directions tab, which just gives us the degrees the ball is hit away from the midline of the field, indicated by a numerical value in degrees, and then an R for right and an L for left. Along the bottom, we have our display of distance, obviously the further the better, then a reconstruction of the path the ball took in the air from the point it crossed the strike zone. In our descriptive section, over on the left, this is all pretty straightforward, as it provides simple counts on the number of hits, number of pitches, as well as the incoming speed of each pitch. And finally, a small strike zone that just shows where the ball crossed the plate to help indicate strikes and balls without the ball flight information provided to the right. And that's all the information that you will see once you open up your hitting Rapsodo for the first time. Hopefully this information all provided a little more context and direction for those of you out there just getting started. So, like we talk about in all of my videos, why does this all matter? If this is your first time diving into a piece of advanced technology, it can be confusing. And especially with hitting, the changes you make over time may not be apparent if you're not well versed in understanding what all of the variables are. And remember, Hitting is reactionary, meaning the pitcher has the power. Every adjustment made in the cages doesn't always translate to success on the field. It's a game of guessing and checking, but with tangible items that you can track daily using devices such as this one, you will hopefully begin to see improvements with everybody over time. And hopefully this video helps spur some new ideas for you to tackle on your own. Good luck, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more simple saber metrics, please subscribe. Click the video on the left for more baseball animations or the video on the right to check out my new vlog. Leave a comment and a like down below to show your support and I will see you next Wednesday with a new baseball animation.